<laughs> well, hello everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> and welcome to some of you who have not been here before. This is Mike from Mike's Magic Resto Detailing and Paint Enhancement here in Shucksburg, Georgia. Oh boy. Man, we had a heck of a storm last night. Lost power for a while. And going to catch you guys up for those of you returning on this current project for customers 2007 Atomic Orange Corvette Convertible. Trust me, there's a convertible top under there. Trust me. <laughs> oh boy, we started off doing a thorough strip wash and then some decontamination ended up doing more clay barn than I had anticipated, but that's okay to remove the contaminants from the paint. Uh, then I decided I was going to have to do a two-step correction on this thing, so we've been compounding, we've been polishing up the storm hours and hours and hours on end. Uh, so the trunk deck is done, the hood is done, not the front end yet. Uh, a little bit of buffer splatter there, that's okay, and dust. This entire driver's side is done. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, folks, it came out very, very nice. Is it perfect? No, it's not. There are some scratches left. I'd say I got 98% or better. But I don't know if y'all can see or not. And that white right there, I'll try to catch it. There's some that are very deep. There's little ones right there, but they're almost impossible to see unless you get some very bright lights and get almost nose to the paint. Most people would never notice them. And there are a few of those left here and there. Man, but remember all these little areas here that you see. Uh like right here, the mirror, little ledge right there, and right back towards here, it gets kind of narrow right there, and there, here, all the way down through there, very, very narrow, get in here, even down underneath was polished. Inside the fender wells has been polished. And it has turned out fantastic. No protection on this paint at all right now, folks. When I get through with the polish, I paint prep the panels so that I'm not left with the polishing oils and that sort of thing, which help mask your result. Because I want to see the true results. I want all that stuff off of there, and then I go over it inch by inch by inch by inch by inch with my inspection lights and so forth and so on to see if I missed anything that I could or should have got. Not chasing perfection, but trying to get as close to it as possible within this budget. <laughs> and as usual, I've got way overboard, and that's okay. Uh, got all these lights going here. I'll tell you what. Got these areas taped off for two reasons, folks. Protect those edges from the buffer and also to make cleanup easier. If you've ever had to get dusting and buffer residue, wax or that sort of thing out of those little itty bitty cracks, you know what I'm talking about. Same thing there, protecting that rubber gasket and letting it overlap onto the glass so that that dusting from the compound and polish and all doesn't get down in there. It can be very difficult to remove. As you can see, these mirrors move back and forth. So I move them that way to get there. And then when I'm going over there, I move them back around this way. <sighs> and this entire front fender has been done and it turned out extremely nice. I'm telling you what. 
uh, and got the top part of this door so far down to that character line right there and I'm considering stopping for the day but I tell you what these Corvettes are curvy 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 and all these little narrow areas and what I call character lines and little curves right there curve right there a little narrow flat spot down there getting in all those places uh, all those little bitty narrow things <laughs> I'll show you guys some of what I've been using here's my big cordless rotary my little buffer which can be converted from rotary to dual action all rotary action on this car folks all rotary and there's one of my three inch backing plates and a wool pad that I have been using for the paint correction in some spots I could take that off and use this five inch backing plate or five inch wool pad and on rotary sometimes I use little one inch wool pads sometimes I use these foam wool pads cutting pad and use the compound for that and the final polish for the final polish and I've got my three inch very soft final polish pad three inch there that'll go on that three inch back and plate there's a one inch five and a quarter inch you can rip this off and put that on. I like the waffle weave because it seems to run cooler than the flat pads. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, using my M302, which is the final polish after you use the um, Coke Kimmy, both of them. H901, which is, as you can read there, a heavy cut compound. And I needed the heavy cut. I tried off, tried starting off with the medium cut, but it's safe. this clear coat is very stubborn, folks, and the medium cut just wasn't doing it. So I had to graduate on up to a heavier cut. I'm gonna roll the tape plate right over there. Oh man! But this thing's gonna look super good when I put the ceiling on here. And then you see where I used a real narrow tape to tape off around the headlights. There again for protection and to prevent such a big mess. It's got a cloth stuff down in there. If you've ever buffed like right around in here, you've got buffer sling and dusting in those little areas there. It's a hole down in there. It goes back about that far. They're tough to clean out. This way, if there's a mess down in there, I did not make it. Now all the way down there, have to drop back down to either the three inch, two inch, or one inch buffer to get all that. Like that mirror. Yeah, there's some defects that are not gonna come out, especially at this level. And a lot of them are factory defects and paint shop defects I just made some notes you can see how many different ones there are 11 <laughs> some of these are caused by people washing it improperly buffing it and that sort of thing you got buffer trails that comes from compounding it with the wool pad and then they don't go back and finish down ridge which are random isolated deep scratches uh, you've seen me handle a few of those I think in the previous video I damp sanding I usually start out with 3000 grit I did that in a couple of places to try to get rid of those and fur droppings everybody knows what that is but they will etch into your cliff coat if not cleaned up same thing with water spots and some of the places on this paint that we thought were water spots or water spot etching from the chemicals, hey, Mr. Dale, actually were not. I couldn't tell exactly until I got the paint absolutely clean. And then upon closer examination, some of them were not water spots. They were factory paint defects. 
either fish ice or sinking. They call them all kind of stuff. I did not see much orange peel. And they call it cratering. Solvent pop. I think we had a little bit of several of those in this paint. Sometimes those can be removed. But that's a whole nother day. A whole nother budget. Extensive work getting rid of those. But you have to be mindful of your clear coat. I like to be clear coat friendly and leave as much clear coat on the car as possible and bring it as close to looking good as I can without compromising the clear coat. Not only does your gloss and shine come from that gel, but your UVA and your UVB protection comes from that also. And if you remove too much clear coat, then on down the road, you face possible clear coat failure, oxidation, and a doubling of the paint. And then you cannot buff it after that once it gets too thin. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, man. But you know what they say, Dale? Like, tag, share, follow, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. All that stuff. i tell you what. <laughs> But this is turning out very nice. It just don't get a whole lot better than that, Dale. It just don't. Like I say, it could get a fraction better. But I'm not sure we would want to go after that. Even if it was in the budget. I'm not sure how much clear coats on this car. So my recommendation would not to be going after too many more defects in this paint. I could go after a few more scratches. The lighter ones it would be okay. But some of this other stuff, I'm not sure whether it would be worth the risk or not. But uh, I was hoping to get all this done today, but I didn't. That's like I say, as far as I got, it's the top part of the door. This is done. So probably tomorrow morning I'll finish that that back there and then I'll tackle this front end and the rear end uh, lots of little places on that too so it'll be kind of pain anyway appreciate you dropping by have a great day thank y'all